I ran to grab my streaming camera and a hat because I need a haircut. I was sitting here watching TV with my daughter and I heard a knock on the door because whoop, 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 beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. It's time to unbox something special. So let's do it. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Second Born, Berkeley graduated, sound gym validated. And yes, we are unboxing something today. So, so we have a, a, a change in format today. I was expecting this package three days from now, and it came three days early. So everything stops. We film, we hook it up, and we get rolling, baby. I already got the light set up for you. So here we go. Believe it or not, I actually made a mistake and I ordered the MC1 Mark I first and I liked it and I unboxed it and I filmed it. The Mark II features a much lower noise floor and I'm able to route the audio in the way that I want it. It's a little more flexible. This is the Heritage Audio MCM8 Mark II. It's a summing mixer in a 500 series rack. The good old 73 output analog warmth and juice the mcm8 mark one you have to use a workaround to bypass uh the slots if you don't have any 500 modules so on the mcm81 actually need to either have 500 modules already or you have to run your audio through the outputs on the back in order to bypass the 500 module and go straight into the summing so I ordered that one first, didn't quite work out for me, so I had to upgrade to the, the Mark II, and here we are, it is today, and that's why we're filming Gorilla Style. I actually took my magic box down, and we went back to the floor, the floor arrangement. I saved a nice little space for them right down there. All right, so we are all hooked up. Looking good in the rag, baby, that looks good. So it's a summing mixer with a 500 series enclosure with eight slots for 500 series modules. I plan on getting some compressors, some distortion, maybe some tape. Um, it does feature uh, on-slot technology, which means each 500 slot has its own power source. You don't get a lot of electronic interference and you get a lot of noise bleed into uh, each slot, each track. The Mark II features a significantly lower noise floor. There's pan and fader control for each slot. There's an on and off switch on each slot so that you can bypass the module directly and go, and go directly into the summing mixer. There are eight inputs and outputs for each slot and an additional two inputs and outputs on the back for a total of 10 ins and outs that you can utilize. Only eight of them in which you can utilize uh, 500 series modules, but all 10 are going to be filtered into the summing technology. This is a passive summing mixer. As you run the audio through each slot, you're going to lose a little bit of gain, but that gain is made up in the in the mix bus stage or the output stage. And the output stage is fitted with a, a class A transformer. When you turn up the output to make up for any lost gain, 
you get a little more sauce. Nothing like that good analog juice. So you get a nice little 1073 vibe, uh, similar to an 80s style Neve or something like that. So when you're working in the boxes, you want that little extra touch. You want that extra degree. And that's exactly why I picked up on this summing mixer. So I'm gonna get everything routed, set up in my DAW. I'll show you my workflow and show you exactly how I intend on using it. Uh, so I've been playing with it for a couple of days now. I have a session loaded up here. The name of the producer in the song is right here so you guys can check him out. So I actually uh, just kind of beefed up his, uh, his two track a little bit. So I have it loaded up here just to kind of give you guys a sense of what this sounds like because I think it sounds pretty amazing. Still have my pajama shorts on, man, that's crazy. So whenever I pull in a session, uh, first thing I do is I, I go ahead and organize it. I name all the tracks, color code them, and I separate them and I send them through to sub mixes. Actually, this is an instrumental mix. My instrumental mixes are a little bit more on the simpler side as far as uh, how I route them. So I have all of my drums. My instruments are usually yellow. My bass is usually blue. Uh, all of my effects, auxes, are usually green. And then they all get routed through my submixes, and my submixes are usually white. So all of my submixes, I have a, I have one for a lead, I have one for harmony, I have one for drums, I have one for bass, one for instruments, and one for all of my effects. So this is currently my my outbox analog chain right now. Now I have the MCM loaded. I actually got a few plates just to cover up until I get some 500 series modules. My lead vocal gets sent out of one, and that's going right down the center. So that's my lead vocal. My bass gets sent out of two, and that's going right down the center. I have my harmonies going out of three and four. It's panned left and right. My drums going left and right out of five and six. I have my instruments going left and right out of seven and eight. And then on the back, there's an auxiliary input that I have any effects going through. And again, I don't have any panning or level control there, but that's going, um, out of nine and 10. You make up any level via the master fader. And that's like if you are pushing it through a t uh, 73. So class A transformer out of that output there. And some sexy, sexy VU meters. Oh man, that's gorgeous. So what happens is out of my output, that's going into my fusion. And if I, and I have it bypassed just for the, the sake of uh, this video, this is like my mix bus, my mix bus chain. So whenever I want to add a little more analog goodness, I drive it a little bit through my SSL. And if I want, I throw the insert on and I find, and I, and I put it through my, uh, my bus comp, my warm audio bus comp, get a little compression, a little transformer action. And then that gets sent right back in to a bounce track that catches it and I just record the feed from here. Really simple chain, but it's a really good chain. And I intend on, for my bass, I intend on having like a, a voice of God maybe, or uh, for my lead, I, I intend on having like a, a 73 preamp. For bass, I intend on getting a voice of God or some kind of subharmonic or compressor. Um, for my harms, a preamp or compressor. Drums, definitely a compressor. Um, for my instrument section, I, I plan on getting a, temp, a tape emulation or saturation, maybe a preamp, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys to offer up suggestions. Uh, but that's where we are right now. And I might even get a second box for this. So I have 16 channels, but that's where we are right now. All right, all right. So I have a session loaded up here. So this is by Trad Studio, and I'll go ahead and leave that link in the description below, just so you guys can hear what that sounds like. This is what it sounds like before it's run through any analog summing. So I'm going to go ahead and loop this section just so you guys can hear. I'll break apart uh, certain elements just so you can hear it run through the analog summing. And I'll do my best to level match this uh, for you. Let's, so here's before. So I liken this to like uh, if you're watching a movie on a on a on a big screen TV, high def versus 4K. 
There's something about running all the signal through the analog sound that gives it a more 3D presence. You don't hear it right away, but you do feel it. So feel the low end. You get a big round, you get a nice round sound. On the top end, it's a lot more open and a lot less harsh. It kind of rounds and smooths everything out like butter. It puts a nice warm blanket over the top end, which is what I really love. And the third thing that I noticed about running everything through an analog summing chain is that I can really drive it without any clipping or distortion. So this is just the drums. So yeah, so the top end smooths out. You get a nice rounder, more 3D effect on that low end. Let's hear the difference in bass. This is before. You can hear the difference. The the bass the bass triggers deeper. The bass hits deeper. It goes it goes further in. I don't, I don't know if that's a way to describe it to you guys, but it goes deeper in. Like I can feel it back into my my wall. And you know, with a little more EQ, a little playing around with the EQ, the top end again, and the top end kind of smooths out. And that's exactly what you want. You want that nice silky smooth. You want that nice smooth buttery top end. And you don't want it to sound cheap. You don't want it to sound uh, tingy or papery or uh, like foily. And running it through the analog summing really rounds those edges. And that's 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 lovely. That's that extra degree that I'm talking about. This is the whole mix without. Analog summing, man. I, you know, I don't, I don't really understand the debate. Really, you can get amazing mixes without analog summing. You don't need analog summing. As a matter of fact, there's a ton of great plugins, and maybe I'll do a separate video on this. But there's a ton of amazing plugins that emulate analog summing, and they sound pretty damn good. You don't need to get an outbox like this, but if you're going to go the route of getting an outboard analog summing box. The Heritage Audio MCM-8 Mark II is definitely a great option. It's a great complement to my Fusion and my Warm Audio Bus Comp um, that I really, really love. So if you guys have any suggestions for me, it is time to start loading up my MCM-8 with some 500 series modules. So if you have any suggestions for me, I'm looking at preamps, I'm looking at comps. So let me know in the comments, what should my first 500 modules be? But I wanted you guys to hear what an analog summing box can do for your in-the-box mixes. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see on this channel. And let me know what you guys think about analog summing in the comments below. Because I want to hear what your thoughts on it are. I'm a believer in it. I am team analog summing. I think it does make a difference. You don't have to have it. But if you do, that's an extra degree. And this channel is all about that extra degree. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.